small content warning, this video does discuss graphic injuries and will show some skeletal remains with traumatic injuries to them, so be warned. Hello! Jimmy back here again. Today we're going to talk about something I've wanted to talk about for a while now, which is why reenactment combat is never authentic. I've done reenactment fighting for 12 years now in loads of societies. I've done Roman, early medieval, high medieval, 17th century pike and shot, lots of other stuff. And none of it has ever been fully authentic combat. Eastern style, Western style, whatever style you want, none of it is fully authentic. And here's why. Reason number one, and this is the big reason, is these things. This is my sword. Well, this is one of my swords. That's my other sword. But this sword is blunt. If you want to decapitate somebody with this, it will take you a long time. It's real steel, but it's blunted. Some societies even have regulations on how blunted the end of your sword has to be. My spear has basically a ball bearing on the end of it to prevent me from stabbing my friends actually through the face. And that is the big thing that we don't do, that medieval soldiers did. They killed each other with sharp weapons. We don't do that. A medieval battlefield was a horrible place because of the weapons that they were using. We have skeletons that have a skull simply opened up like a boiled egg. We have other skulls with puncture wounds from arrows through them, with chips taken off their jawbone. We have a man who was killed in the 6th century, probably during the Gothic Wars, the Greek Gothic Wars, whose arm was up like that and a sword simply cut through his ulna, just through the bone of his forearm. His forearm was probably half hanging off at that point. We don't do that to each other. We don't commit these grievous, violent, bloody injuries. If you're not wearing armour and a spear is thrust into your into your torso, there's a good chance that your internal organs will simply escape. And that is not nice. We don't do that because this is a hobby. Historical reenactment combat is a sport? Absolutely. But it's also a hobby that we all want to go home from safely. Nobody wants to turn up Monday morning for work with their jaw hanging off, like one of the guys from the Battle of Towton in the 15th century. Nobody wants to turn up to their job on a reception desk with the entire orbital of their face missing. Nobody wants that. I have turned up for work with a tooth that I had to get replaced because of root canal, with huge bruises all over my body, and at one point with a fractured cheekbone. But the guy who did that to me broke down in tears afterwards, and I feel like that's probably actually quite a good portrayal of what a guy would do the first time he hit someone with a weapon in combat. This is not warfare. Historical reenactment fighting isn't warfare. No matter how hard you hit, even if you do Eastern style. That's what we're going to talk about next. If you don't know the difference between Eastern and Western style combat, that's probably a good thing, because it's a very arbitrary thing, it's a very reenactorism-y thing. It's a new idea that's developed in the 21st century, because in Eastern Europe, places like Volin, you see people hitting each other full force with their weapons, hitting headshots, taking headshots, um, concussing each other with their weapons, wearing really big chunky armour, looks a bit silly, it's not very authentic, uh, it looks a bit like, no, no offence to you guys, but it looks like SCA heavy armour, and Western style is what was more popular in places like the UK, where people wear more authentic clothing for the period, so they don't wear those armadillo gloves that would never have been seen, and they, they wear male shirts over a bit of padding, as would have been worn in the period. But you don't see headshots, and you don't see full force blows most of the time. The problem with calling it Eastern versus Western is me and my friends frequently get up in all of our high medieval combat stuff, all of the armour, and hit each other full force and do headshots. And in Eastern Europe, a lot of people are now dressing in much more authentic clothing and for forsaking, foregoing that full strength combat style in favour of authenticity. So it doesn't really work. It's just divisive between Eastern and Western Europe. That's not a nice thing. That's not a helpful thing for our hobby and for our, for our discipline. So I don't recommend using that necessarily. I would just say, you know, full contact combat versus pulled blows or something like that. But the thing about full contact versus Eastern or Western or whatever is they are swings and roundabouts. So in Western, you will not see people using their weapons as effectively and as authentically. 
Many Western-style fighting groups don't need you to wear one of these. I don't wear a helmet sometimes when I go into combat. I probably should. Lots of the full force, full, full, uh, full contact, full strength blows societies and things like Boo Hurt and Battle of the Nations are included in this. You have to wear hand protection. You have to wear neck protection. You have to wear head protection. You have to wear shin guards. You have to protect your groin and your genitals because some of those are valid hit areas. Generally not the gentleman's zone, but the rest of them, hands, usually a valid hit area. And that means that you see people wearing these chunky, chunky armors, which simply wasn't worn in the Viking Age. That's not a thing. So if somebody's dressed as a Viking and they look like an armadillo, that is forsaking his Germanic warrior creed, if you like. It wasn't a warrior creed necessarily, but the concept in the militaristic side of early medieval society, especially Germanic society, was you go into battle, you face your enemy bravely, you take the wounds and the injuries and the scars, you walk proudly off the battlefield, or you die in glorious combat. Not, you protect yourself from every single injury possible. That would be cowardice to many. So the idea that the Vikings must have worn all of this super heavy armour because they had elite troops doesn't, doesn't jive. That doesn't jive at all with the way that they thought about themselves. And that is a big one. We do not think like medieval people. We don't think like people in the past. Our lives are not ruled by our liege lords and our religions in the same ways that they were in the past. They're just not anywhere, pretty much. In reenactment, no reenactor on the field with you is fighting on behalf of his liege lord to the death for the sake of the honour of his country or for the lives of his families back home. They're just there to have fun. And that is a big difference, is the psychology of it. The psychology of it is different. No matter how hard you hit your friends in Boo Hurt, no matter how full contact you are, or how Western style you are, you are not a warrior. You are not a Viking. You're not. I'm sorry. And you're certainly not some elite Norse warrior tribe member. You're really not. No matter how much mead you drink around the fire afterwards. You're a an athlete, a hobbyist, a sportsman. But if this is the only fighting you do, you're not a warrior, chum. Sorry. One of the other things that we do in basically any period of reenactment is we have rules, and those rules are there to protect us, and that is good. Even if the rule is, please do not use sharp weapons on the battlefield. That's not a rule that would have been in place in medieval combat. Yes, there was the chivalric idea later on that nobles shouldn't be killed by peasants, but at places like Agincourt, that was very, very, very quickly dispelled as basically a myth on the battlefield. Men were killed by other people on the battlefield. It, it was whoever killed you, killed you, you know? Harold Godwinson was probably hacked to death by noblemen and commoners alike. But we have rules, and... A lot of our rules are inauthentic. No hand shots, no shots to the groin, no neck shots. Whereas we know that many injuries in the period would have been to the forearms, the face, the neck and collarbone, the shins and the feet. Because those are the places that are not covered by your shield. We also use shields and swords differently. We simply do. And part of that is this epidemic of people taking Royal Armouries Manuscript 133, the Fecht book. Uh, and this, this Fechtbuch is 14th century, it's from the 1320s probably, and it's the one that has people doing all of this stuff with their buckler and their sword. Uh, it's a fencing manual, it is absolutely not illustrative of how early medieval battlefield combat would have been done. If you try and do all of that stuff on the battlefield in the Viking Age, chances are the archers would pepper your ass with arrows, or the men in the battle line next to the man you're trying to fence with would skewer you with a spear in seconds. The Anglo-Saxons tell us that if you draw your sword in combat, it's because things have gone wrong. Your standard weapon is the spear. The sword is for close combat if the poop hits the fan or if you're charging into a melee to try and punch through the enemy's lines. This whole sword and buckler fencing stuff where people dance around each other and try to avoid all of the blows, again, it's a little bit of feat for a society armed with hacking weapons. And these are hacking weapons, they're not fencing swords. They are for beating your enemy bloodily to death. This is why we have skulls that have upwards of 10 
marks on them from swords, because men were simply beating each other until they stopped twitching. Until the brain is out of the skull, keep hitting him. Pump your arm with the sword in it until the man is dead. They were violent, brutal combats, and the stink of blood and poop and urine and dying animals, screaming human beings, your friends and families praying and howling and begging for help, isn't something that we do on reenactment battlefields. A, because PTSD is a serious thing, and B, because this is fun. This is a hobby. Treat it like a hobby. If any of you guys are thinking of doing reenactment fighting, then do it. Join up. Your local reenactment society wants you. But remember, it's never going to be authentic. And I'm not just talking about the, oh, well, the sword actually weighs about four grams less than a real Viking sword and my shield is two millimetres too thick. Just shut up, that doesn't matter. You're doing it all wrong anyway. We're wearing the wrong armour, we're using the wrong weapons in the wrong ways, and we're not killing each other. Stop it. Who cares? It's fine. It's a hobby. Get out there, pick up a spear, pick up a shield, go in, have some fun. And bear in mind, the vast majority of medieval and early medieval people weren't wearing that pile of armour that you see a lot of people wearing. This is one that confuses people as well, but this goes into the people thought differently thing. People think differently to how a lot of us believe, and there are many of us who have never set foot on a real-life battlefield who cannot fathom somebody picking up a weapon and not trying to protect themselves from every kind of injury possible. But think about guerrilla fighters, right into the 21st century, who don't wear any armour at all, or any specialised clothing. Think about the millions of men in World War I and World War II who went into frontline combat, and women who went into frontline combat just wearing wool. Some of them not wearing helmets. Yeah, that's bravery. One of the other big things that we do is we use sources from hundreds of years after the period, like Manuscript 133, which is a 14th century Fechtbuch from a time where gunpowder was now being introduced into European warfare, and plate armour was de rigueur for heavily armoured men. Absolutely not how Viking combat worked. We have this weird view of the past, even some reenactors, where if it's old and it uses the same type of things, if it uses swords and shields, it must apply to every period where swords and shields are used. That's a really dangerous way of looking at the past. It's, it's very strange that even historical reenactors and historians are okay with taking something completely unrelated to their subject and very, very tenuously trying to link it to it. Stop using 133 for Viking stuff. It's completely completely inapplicable. Uh, and don't fight me IRL, because you're not a warrior and neither am I and I'll call the police. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly enjoyed thinking about this. If there's anything that you think I've forgotten, uh, if you're a reenactor and there's there's reenactorism or there's something inauthentic that you think should have been included in this, please do let us know in the comments. It's always lovely to get engagement from my fellow reenactors and I really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much to all of my patrons and supporters. I'm going to be revamping my Patreon this year. We'll be doing events and there's going to be some extra bonus content going up there a bit more regularly so you get your money's worth. Thank you very much. Until the next time, Bye-bye.